When will this year end? Okay, that was dumb. I thought it would be funnier, but it wasn't. Also, my sign is back. I forgot to put that in my last couple videos. It's returned. Okay, so my original intention was only to put out one video this week and- It was gonna be my spooky content. But then last night, a fellow booktuber tagged me in a really fun, interesting tag, and today I have the day off. So I figured, why not just dive into that? It is the end of the year book tag because this year needs to end. Vellum and Velicor tagged me. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm also gonna link her original video down below for you guys to check it out. If you want to, you really should. She does some really great stuff. Thought it was like a good way to one, reflect on the year, but two, talk about what I still need to read and sort of get done before 2021 comes. Oh my god, 2021. <sighs> what? Mm. Mm. You want your bone? There are six questions in this tag and- Oh, I need coffee. Let's do that first. Okay, we're back. My mom got me this mug from Target. Look how cute it is. Okay, so first question. Are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Y'all. If you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. I tweeted- What did I say? Fuck, I forgot my own tweet. I said, when you're a mood reader, but don't know what mood you're in for like 10 days, over the past 10 days, I've started a new book every day. <laughs> like pick this up, murder? I'm not sure. Romance? Gross. I, 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 and I, I'm just gonna pick a few of the ones that I started and I need to finish. By the way, none of these books I put down because they're bad. I just put them down because, you know, who am I kidding? I'm not doing anything. I thought that as readers, we were supposed to be good at focusing. Isn't that a stereotype that people who read are smart? Well, <laughs> I clearly did not get that gene. Where the fuck are my notes? Okay, the books that I need to finish. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Long list of National Book Award. It was the Good Morning America Book Club pick. New York Times bestseller. I've been dying to read it. If you look at my Goodreads, I'm on page eight. Okay, now I'm on page like 20, but- See, I really need to focus. So it is- is about twin girls who leave their southern hometown and go on to lead extremely different lives, one as a black woman and one as white passing. That was published in June 2020. It's swept over my whole feed. All of these books, by the way, are books I'm pretty sure everyone's read that I have not read yet this year. The next book that I need to finish is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's her memoir. It's like has a lot of themes of feminism. It was published in March. I'm not normally somebody who reads a lot of nonfiction or memoir, what have you, but I will read a good one. And I think this is a good one. I love any book that sort of talks about women's place in society and how people view us and how we view ourselves based off how they view us. If I'm summarizing any of these books incorrectly, please just, please cut me a little slack. Guys, I really am struggling lately. Okay, the next book that I need to finish is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. This I started last night and I'm on page 50. And this just came out in August. I really like Lisa Jewell. I first discovered her when I read Then She Was Gone. Then I read her, I think it was I Found You, then I read Family Upstairs. This is her new release. I'm very excited to read it. While I think her books are becoming more thriller and more crime oriented, I think she does do a good job of tapping into family dynamics. I'm a sucker for like the perfect family. The bourbon, quiet, safe neighborhood. With dark undertones. I love that kind of shit. I'm sorry, I just do like Lisa Jewel. I think she's really cool. I follow her on Instagram. Please be my mom, please. Mom, my actual mom. Oh wait, my mom doesn't know about my channel. Okay, I was about to say, mom don't kill me, but. So Lisa Jewel for now can be my writer mom. The past couple months I have been such a reading slut like a little bit here a little bit there a little bit there I've literally read probably a thousand pages combined of all these different books and I have not completed any of them. Okay number two I dropped my papers. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Well autumnal you say? I got this shirt. <laughs> I got this shirt the other day. I love this color. I love it because it looks like a butternut squash. <laughs> and I was like, we out here looking like a butternut squash. Okay, I'm gonna do what she did where she said that she was kind of focusing more on spooky books because like October is a nice transition from the summer books that we read and in October that's when we start going into more spooky stuff. Even though I'm a crime lover and I read thrillers all year round, I do tend to read lighter books in the summer and darker, more intense books in the winter. I'm gonna say two books that I wanna read for the transition into the end of the year. First one is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. It was the Marie Claire September book club pick. It was on New York Times bestseller, USA Today, and it is being described as Rear Window Meets Get Out. 
I know. Isn't that such a great pitch? So Rear Window is my favorite Hitchcock film. I watch it every year. I know, yes, I'm lame. I was such a cliche film major. So I love anything Rear Window. You know, there was The Woman in the Window, which I have thoughts on that book. There's a really interesting New York Times article about that author. I'll link it down below. You guys, that author. If you don't know about the author of Woman in the Window, you need to read this article. Okay, we're getting off track. One, it's a thriller, which I love, and it's sort of, like I was saying before, like behind closed doors, that type of storyline. But two, what I think is really good, falling in line with one of the reasons why I think Get Out works so well is kind of talking about the African-American experience through the lens of horror. Horror and thriller are genres that have been traditionally extremely white, especially horror. And it's kind of interesting to me because Jordan Peele did his revolutionary taking that genre on as a way to explore the african-american experience you know today i am white i don't know the lived experiences i'm not gonna claim to know so i can't speak on that if you haven't seen my scottish noir videos i'll put a card up above again i'll link them down below i personally am so all for <laughs> uh, genres expanding and diversifying and including more people so that being said i think the idea of like a thriller horror creepy book to talk about racial injustice is such an interesting topic. The next spooky book that I want to mention, oh my god, we're only in question two, as my transition book is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morano Garcia, also New York Times bestseller, and it's actually being adapted into a Hulu limited series, like What Happened with Little Fires or Big Little Lies, I think by Kelly Ripa. You okay? The cat sneezed. Um, I think Kelly Ripa is adapting it. I'm not sure if people have thoughts on that. I haven't read the book yet. I have no idea, but I think it'd be really interesting. It takes place in 1950s Mexico about the haunted mansion. It's like a little bit supernatural. I've heard, I don't want to say too much. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? Okay. So Technically this already came out, but it came out more recently. So I'm gonna get away with it. I am excited to read The Invisible Life of Adia LaRue by V.E. Schwab. You guys, this book has taken over oh. booktube and book twitter so many people are reading it or trying to get their hands on it or talking about it they were anticipating it i i had never heard of this book before i had never heard of it until a few weeks ago i know this is bad please don't come at me i'm an ignorant fool Try it, you ignorant slut i decided to read the summary and when i read the summary i was like fuck i want to read this book it sounds so cool it's about a woman in 1700s in france makes a deal like a faustian deal with the devil or someone i don't know to live forever with the caveat whoever met her would forget her follows her life throughout the centuries until one day she kind of stumbles into a bookstore and meets somebody who remembers her it's just sort of exploded <laughs> maybe i just really living life under a rock. It was New York Times bestseller, USA Today, National Indie Book bestseller, Washington Post bestseller. I don't have my hands on any copy. If everyone's talking all about a book, I do want to read it because one, either worth the hype and therefore it's a great book, or two, it's not worth the hype, but you don't know that until you read it yourself. Question four, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Okay, I'm going to include three books that I started, read 10 pages of and put down because I've been a book slut lately. The first book that I need to finish before the end of this year is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evariste. This book <laughs> has won so many awards. Here are all the awards it's won. I know I keep mentioning like awards and bestsellers and all these things that these books have won and I'm not saying that you need to win awards to be a great book. I mean it won the Booker Prize. Barack Obama chose it as one of his favorite books. It was shortlisted for Women's Prize. I just feel like when a book receives so many accolades there's got to be something there right I'm not saying that you have to win all these awards to be a good book but if you are i want to check that book out i got this book on the kindle back in like fucking fucking a when did i get it like in january i've had it in my kindle since january i just haven't focused on it i think it looks really good i'm just again being a fickle you know book hoes ain't loyal just type of reader lately i need to just focus and read it and i do want to read it before the end of this year another book i want to finish by the end of this year and this is just a random book killers of the flower moon by david grant it was published in 2017 my mom read it this year and loved it which brought my attention to the book and then another friend of mine he also read it this year loved it recommended it to me it is a non-fiction book which is sort of unusual 
difficult for me to read, but I'm always down to read a good story. It's about the birth of the FBI and the Osage murders. Osage. How the fuck? What, mur what murders is it? I don't know. For some reason, it's just cropped up in my life randomly, like two or three times this past year. I'm going to take that as a sign that I need to read it. Another book I want to read by the end of the year is His Only Wife by Peace Adzo Midi. Okay, I really do apologize for that piece. Interviewers got your name wrong and I was trying to find a clip with you pronouncing your name, but I couldn't. I'm so sorry. It was the Reese Witherspoon book club pick for October. Oh, I have it with me. This book. I just think it looks really cool. Like, it sounds so good. I don't want to be redactive, but this was sort of what it was being described as. A crazy rich Asians for West Africa. Like, that sounds awesome. It was a New York Times book review editor's choice. It was recommended by the Millions Book Riot Bookster. I read the first 20 pages again, I know. And it was really good so far. It's not even 300 pages, so I should be able to sit down and read this in one day. Another book I want to read by the end of the year is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This won the Women's Prize for Fiction, National Bestseller, published in July. You guys, I'm going to show my cards right now. Okay, I don't like Shakespeare be just because it's Shakespeare. I know everyone says that. Like, I do think if you're somebody who does not like Shakespeare, that's fine. I don't think that you should be shunned by anybody. I think that he shouldn't be everyone's favorite writer of all time. I think that's very exclusive, and I think that that is like a limited definition. He's not my my favorite writer of all time but he got those funny dick jokes though like he's got so many dick jokes i find him funny i like his dick jokes i like his fart jokes because he's like snobby people oh my god he's so literary As shakespeare was trying to make money and be the most commercial writer at the time and he's since become this like literary icon he's like y'all i was just trying to make jokes about dicks and poops and swords and um essentially what i'm saying is i'm all for anything that sort of loosens up a very stuffy view of this man or anyone in his life. I would read a book on Anne Hathaway. If anybody has a great book on Anne Hathaway, recommend it down below because that's an interesting character as well. I, I just personally like anything that gives a little bit more color to his persona. And yes, I know the book is not about him. It's about his son, Hamnet, who died young and who inspired, you know, Hamlet, the play. And I don't even know if Shakespeare is in that book. I don't know. So I am excited to see like a different view of that life, that world. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? I think for this one, Anxious People by Frederick Backman. This book came out in September, instant bestseller. It was People Magazine, like book of the week. A couple of my friends have read it and are recommending recommending it highly. I have not read A Man Called Ove, which is his first book. I know, everyone read that book and I did not read it. This book I heard is more of like a thriller, a hostage situation, or like a failed bank robbery hostage situation. I, I don't know, don't quote me on that. I just think it looks really kind of cool. Love a good thriller. I know he's a good writer. I'm excited to read it. I think it could shock me. I think it could be my favorite book of the year. My favorite books of the year so far, I have two of them. Queenie by Candace Carter Williams and Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Loved those books. If you haven't read those books yet, read those. Those are highly, highly, highly recommended. Maybe it just spoke to me. Queenie was one of the favorite books I've ever read. Like I just, it just touched me in a way. I know some people might not feel that way, but for me, it just really hit me at the right time. It's such a fun age. I also absolutely love. So if you haven't read those books yet, go read them. Please do. They're so good. Have you already started making reading plans for 2021? Like I said before, I've started literally like 30 books this year and I haven't finished any of them. So my plan in 2021 is to finish all the books I started this year. Also, one special thing I want to say is I received my first ARC. ARC is an advanced reader copy. I received my first ARC. <laughs> I'm a real booktuber now. It comes out in March 2021. Finish all the books that I read in 2020 and then read this book. How beautiful this is. It's called Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. I'm so excited for this book. I can't believe I got an arc, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to talk too much about this book right now because I want to do a video on it later. Look at this beauty. 
Okay guys, this was a good video. I know I rambled. Thanks again for Shanna K for tagging me in this video. Probably butchered the tag, too many book suggestions, whatever. I agree, 2020 needs to be over. I'm gonna tag a few people who I think would have a lot of fun doing this tag. If you guys have already done this tag, sorry. If you don't wanna do it, no pressure, but it's just something kind of fun to do. I wanna tag Steph Read Run. I'm gonna tag Book Enthusiast, Katie Can't Read, and I'm gonna tag Nicole Reads. If you guys wanna do the tag, go ahead. Here's me tagging you. If you don't wanna do it, no pressure, no worries. <laughs> I'm not gonna like, you know, get really sad. Or <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's full of lots of recommendations. I know I haven't read a lot of these books yet, but they all look really exciting. If you have read some of these books that I've mentioned, let me know what you think. But no spoilers. If you haven't read them yet, I hope I've encouraged you to do so. I've also included links to all the books I mentioned down below, and you can also find them on my bookshop shop, which I've also included down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more book content like this. Oh, also follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Bye. Thanks.